Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Wind Waker Unflooded, a 3D modeling fan art project where I am reimagining the kingdom of Hyrule within the world and art style of The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. Of course, if you played Wind Waker, you know that the islands of the Great Sea are actually the mountaintops of Hyrule, but we never get to fully explore Hyrule. We just see a small portion of it near Hyrule Castle. So this project is all about bringing that world to life that we never really got to see. This is Wind Waker Unflooded. And so I did a world tour of it recently and just kind of showed you all the major points. But there were some people commenting that they kind of wanted to see it up close and personal as if they were walking around. They reminded me that Blender had a feature where you can view the model in first person. So let's, um, let's do that. Let's take another look at the model starting at where all great adventures start, Outset Island, which is now Outset Mountain. Forgive me as it loads. I'm sure the model... Blender might run a little slow, but oh man, I'm so excited. Just already from the top of this mountain, let's let's get to that overlook up there so that we can look out over this world that we've created. Oh man, it is so exciting just to see it in first person because that's the way that it's meant to be seen, you know? It, it's meant to be experienced up close, and I know I spend so much of my time modeling in a very distant kind of overview of the model, so I think it'll be helpful um, not just to show you, but, you know, for my own sake, to look at the model from this vantage point, which I don't do often. Uh, so this is a good excuse, not just to show you, but for me to see it as well. And, oh, man. I mean, just imagine being on top of this mountain, looking up, looking out. You can see the whole kingdom before you. I think about the manual art from some of the old Zelda games where Link was on top of a mountain and could see so many things around him. And you can't see everything. From here, it's like you could see the castle, except that there's mountains in the way. And so that's part of just like, you know, there's restrictions to your viewpoint. Um, that's part of the design that comes with the mountains being where they are. I mean, you could see the Earth Temple over there, Ice Ring Isle over there, the Forest Haven's going to be over there. There's so much that's incomplete. So this is this is very much like not a final view, but it does give you just a sense of what would it look like. Um, and it does feel... You know, it feels more complete when you're in it than when you're just looking at it. So that's that's a nice feeling, even though there's so much to do. There's so much to add and to keep working on. But anyway, uh, let's kind of skedaddle <laughs> and explore more of this world. So we have this ranch on Outset Mountain. There's so much left to add. Oh, man. I mean, you know, this this just reminds me of all that I want to do. But anyway, I mean, let, let's start approaching Lake Hylia, which Outset Island uh, overlooks in this version of the map. We're approaching the bridge of Hylia, this great bridge above a pretty tall lake here. This gives you a sense of scale if you haven't really gotten it from the videos of just how tall this bridge really is. I do think this video will help with scale if, if there's, uh, you know, if y'all have been kind of curious about the scale of things and how big this map really is. Um, you can see the sea platforms up ahead. Here's the bridge of Hylia. Um, Let's just kind of really get on it, just so you have a sense of, of um, a being there, right? Yeah, that's helpful. I'm sorry that Blender's running just a little slow. The frame rate may not be great, but I'm doing my best to give y'all a look. So yeah, I mean, this gives you a great view. Um, you'll be able to see the Great Plateau, which is right there. Up ahead, you have the city in the sky. If y'all have been curious about what that was up there, that's based on Twilight Princess's city in the sky. Um, and I love the idea of using, what is it, the Islet of Steel? as the basis for that. Um, I don't know. I think it's a cool design. I wasn't sure what to do with the Island of Steel. I had a couple different option, options in mind in my head. I thought it could be the you know, the, to uh, the top of a tall fortress, some kind of tower, um, this fortified structure. But I was like, you know, let's make it the city in the sky. You know, it has all the that mechanical edge to it. Let's connect it to that. I just wanted to kind of show you all what it looked like from the top. What do you call this? The crow's nest? The top of one of these like sea platforms. So join me as we um, look at that vantage point. I think that'll be dramatic. So this is the lookout tower over Lake Hylia. And oh man, this gives you a different vantage point than Outside Island, right? Because you can look over and see Lake Hylia, the Great Plateau, and now the desert. Um, the South Lomay Labyrinth there, the city in the sky, and the restored Great Fish Isle behind it. You can see the Colosseum there. Um, what is this? Um... Uh, um, uh, I'm completely forgetting that island's name. Excuse me. Fake Wind Waker fan, but Shark Island. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the one with the stone head. What is that called? 
that's embarrassing. I can't even think of the name of it. Um, that is embarrassing. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm adding these um, C platforms as if they connect to the ones that we see in the Great Sea in the game. But I'm also adding other like monster platforms like throughout the world as well, just to to um, spice things up. So there's the Great Plateau. Let's let's figure out. I've talked before about the cave system. Um, let's really explore that and see what the journey is like. Uh, what it would take to actually enter the Great Plateau as we've designed it within this map. Um, you can see there's some texture work left to do. I mean, there's always stuff left to do. I don't need to keep making excuses. Y'all know that this is a work in progress. Y'all know that this is not a finished map. I don't need to keep telling you that. Um, but just in case you haven't heard enough, uh, let me make just a couple more excuses for y'all. So, like I said, um, this is the Great Plateau. We are now entering the world below it from its depths. I know the word depths now has a different connotation because of Tears of King Kingdom, so I'm sorry for using the word, but anyway, we are entering the caves. There are caves in Wind Waker Unflooded. I'm sorry to spend time on it and not in the overworld, but I just thought it was cool. I thought it would be cool. I'm sorry, guys. I, I, do, I still think it's cool. <laughs> so we follow this path as we wind slowly up. You can see that we're, we come out into this great cavern. Um, with all these twists and turns built into the side of the Great Plateau. And so this winding path leads you all the way up um, until, I mean, it continues to wind for uh, good ways, <laughs> until, excuse me, where's the exit? I think the exit's up here. It's hard to tell from below. You would know when you're on the path. Is this up? No, there's more. But wait, there's more. And so this takes you all the way to the bridge here. Here's the, here's the final bridge. Um, you would get on top of that, and then there's the exit. Sweet. So, oh man, I mean that this is a this is a tall cave, tall tall mountain over here, guys. <laughs> um, so you exit the cave, and then now you're on the surface of the Great Plateau. That's the goal. And so welcome, welcome to we have our own version of the Temple Time Temple of Time over here. And I, I've said before, too, but just in case y'all didn't catch it in this video, um, that the idea is that, like, these would be the ruins of Skyloft. So you may kind of recognize the general layout of this part of the Great Plateau. And so that's the idea that Skyloft descended um, onto the Great Plateau. So there's, like, a layout that's the same, but, of course, like, buildings wouldn't have survived. So it's in new structures around it, but just the geography of it is the same. Was that Needle Rock Island? Is that what that's called? Where you find the ghost ship chart, there's um, Mount Hylia from the Great Plateau, like by um, by the icy river. I think that's so. Like I am combining Breath of the Wild locations, like with Wind Waker locations, with Ocarina of Time locations, with Twilight Princess locations. And I know that there's people that don't think I should. That's Needle Rock Island. Excuse me. That's uh, what is that called? Um. Man, I'm forgetting all my islands name, I, island names. I need to replay Wind Waker, or else I wouldn't be forgetting that. Not that like the names of the islands are super important, but like obviously I remember what's what's there. But um, that is something where I, sh I I do need to replay the game so that I can get that sense of um, you know, just like that sense of honesty that comes with like knowing where you know where the locations are and what's there and what they're called and being able to connect the dots between all those things. That's something I do need to do. So. Forgive me, I do need to replay the game. But anyway, before we keep watching this uh, world tour, I think it's time for a short message. So I will talk to all of you again after the break. See you then. If you want to be able to support me as a creator, there are several ways that you can make possible the creation of everything that I do. Become a Patreon member. I post all kinds of exclusive content that you can only see first on Patreon. Stuff like behind the scenes content for my filmmaking projects, whether that's in progress scripts, storyboards, rough cuts, anything for my newest films that aren't posted anywhere else besides Patreon. So become a member, you know, there, there's a whole range of prices and you can support me even, even in small ways, that's super meaningful. Supporting me on Patreon too gets you in the credits list of any film that I release while you're a member. And like I said, even a little goes a long way. You can also collaborate with me now through Fiverr. I offer a range of services that could help bring your project to life. And if you've heard any music in the background of this video, that was my music. So feel free to look me up on Spotify or Apple Music or wherever you listen to music. Type in Joe Kendrick. That's J-O-E-K-E-N-D-R-I-C-K. Look up Joe Kendrick on Spotify. Supporting me is super meaningful. I don't make any ad revenue on Wind Waker Unflooded. 
If you see an ad on the videos because YouTube is putting ads on the videos, I'm not making any ad revenue from this project. It's completely not monetized for me. So if you want to be able to support me as a creator, any way that you can do that means a lot and it goes towards the creation of all that I do. So thank you to everyone who supported me along the way. Let's uh, let's navigate over here. Let's make a stop at the city in the sky for a second after leaving the Great Plateau. This does, I think, give you a better sense of scale than the world tour I previously made. So, you know, I totally get why y'all are asking for a more intimate look at the world. Um, but it does take a second to fly over. I mean, you can see that there's so many, like, missing gaps here, right? I guess, like, below um, below me is the river and the labyrinth, so there's, there's not nothing in between our destinations. But uh, there is so much more that I want to add to the world and, um, you know, just continuing to flesh it out and make sure that there's no empty space anywhere. I don't want it to feel cluttered, but I do want every inch of the map to feel interesting. Um, you can see that in the city in the sky, I've added the sea platform on top of all these other floating islands. Um, I'm not like, um, all the animation is like paused right now. Like, um, I could like press play. So y'all see, um, how that looks actually, that's not working here. Excuse me. That doesn't work in, um, navigation mode, this navigation mode, I guess the space bar is just a, it's just like a move forward button. Interesting. Interesting. But anyway, here's the city in the sky in the style of the legend of Zelda, the wind waker bringing you to the top is the islet of steel. Um, behind it is where you fight like the dragon and twilight princess. That's the idea. Um, I mean, y'all got it. Y'all played Twilight Princess, right? Do I have to explain what this is? Um, <laughs> maybe I do. I don't know. I don't know what I have to explain to y'all. But I don't know. That that location was really exciting to work on and bring to life. Just because that's not a location I expected to bring into this project. And so it was really rewarding to bring it in and go, yeah, like this surprised me. But I think it makes sense. Um, and it's cool to see it like just in this world and have a couple floating islands. I don't like think I'll do many like Tears of the Kingdom style floating islands um, if I do any. Like, those do exist in Hyrule sometimes. And I think about, like, the Minish Cap had a floating, like, city. Those kind of, like, miraculous... In Twilight Princess, this is all, like, mechanically floating. The question is just, like, if there are floating islands, would the magic be persisting at this part of the timeline? And I'm not sure. Uh, comment down below if you think that that could be an option. But anyway, I wanted to show y'all Great Fish Canyon. I've been working on this location recently. And so let's just kind of take another closer look at it. There's this path that goes from the river down there that brings you up to the uh, the bridge up here overlooking the canyon. So let's kind of get a taste of what it's like to um, ascend this mountain and cross this bridge. So this is going to be, oh man, this is going to be dramatic when all is said and done and you can kind of look out over this part of the canyon and it's all, you know, the river's down below you. Uh, but this takes you over to um, the restored version of Great Fish Island. Um which I'm really excited to, I'm going to work on like a mining town here. I think I've talked about that in videos. I think we've discussed that idea. Um, and so, I mean, you follow these bridges if you want to continue to climb the mountain. And so that takes you up here all the way to, there should be a shrine up ahead if we keep climbing the mountain. Um, yeah, so here's the river. You see that, you follow that. And here is the restored version of the, the door that we saw destroyed on Great Fish Island um, with this great shrine in front of it where Jaboon would be um, kept safe. So, I don't know. I'm really excited. This, is, this was um, created by Callum's Army, this part of um, the map. I mean, there's so many contributors on this project that, you know, I, I, I want to, you know, I'd love to shout them all out in this video. But um, if I don't say their names... Um, check the description. I, I, you know, I keep a updated credits list in the description of all my videos. Um, just in case you want to know who worked on what, um, you know, who's contributed to the project. So, um, thank you, you know, thank you to all the contributors on this project. Um, I'm really thankful for all of their work. I love the way that this, uh, that this top of the mountain looks. Thank you, Callum, for your work. Um, yeah, so this is, you know, a Gerudo seg uh, settlement is the idea that they've settled here on top of this mountain, on top of... Um, what becomes Great Fish Isle in The Wind Waker. Uh, where to next? Let's go ahead and see the desert. Um, so here we have the ruins of Inskyward Sword. You may recognize the um, Lanayru mining facility. Uh, that, that's what this is supposed to be. 
um, restyled as if it's in the style of the Wind Waker. And, you know, it's just like a different look at it. Like, you know, maybe there's been some archaeology where some more of it's been uncovered. Um, I think that there's an opportunity there to kind of revisit its design and add to it. Um, and, and I've done videos on most of these locations that I'm pointing out, but I know that there's so many new viewers that like don't know the locations I've made and or the locations that I haven't made. Um, there's the Arbiter's Grounds that we're passing by now. Um, it's like I think it had its own video. Oh, should I go here or here first? Let's go here through this canyon. Um, this is all kind of new. So this was, um, I think this video came out like a month ago, but um, in next to the Cliff Plateau Isles here, um, these are the ruins of an old Gerudo, I say Gerudo city. This, this you know, may have um, predated the civilization of the Gerudo themselves, but it's in the Gerudo region, right? And so this is just the idea of this old um, civilization, you know, old city from this old civilization. Um, and I'm using the same brickwork from the Tower of uh, the Gods. So this idea that the Tower of the Gods civilization, the people that built that, uh, which has its own unique architecture that is separate from the Hyrulean architecture that we see in the Wind Waker and like Hyrule Castle, right? The Tower of the Gods has its own feel. So I want to say that that civilization would have, um, you know, maybe long ago they could have expanded the whole world. Um, as ancient civilizations do in, you know, as we see like in games like Breath of the Wild with the Sheikah or Tears of the Kingdom with the Zonai. And maybe the city belongs to one of those civilizations. Um, I don't know who people think the Tower of the Gods like civilization is that built it, what the prevailing theory is right now. I know it's people have talked about it being both the Sheikah or the Zonai, just depending. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to kind of show off this just kind of ancient city um, that I built. Um, it's fairly simple, and there's a lot still that I want to add to it um, just to give it a little more life. But... Um, but that's the idea, just kind of showing y'all just a glimpse of this old civilization, um, kind of cradled under this, um, or I guess it's in a valley, right? So there's going to be mountains on both sides. So I think that that'll be pretty dramatic. I got to figure out where the, exactly the railroad goes over here too. I am adding a railroad in this map, y'all. I think it's cool. I think it makes sense. It's a big world. It makes sense to have a railroad, um, like, and I know that, like, scale-wise, right, like, if I'm just showing off the model, sometimes you, like, you look around, locations seem, like, kind of close together. So I hope that this video helps communicate the scale, that, like, this is a large map. It would take a while to traverse, you know, on foot. Like, this is, this is a big world, even if I can just kind of look over and see something in the distance. Like, it's still, like, pretty expansive. Um, so I just wanted to show off Gerudo Town as well modeled in the style of the Breath of the Wild Gerudo Town. Um, I don't know. I thought that that'd be a cool design to kind of harken back to. So either um, the Gerudo Town in Breath of the Wild is an ancient city that could date back to the time of Wind Waker, before Wind Waker, um, or it's modeled after this old town, you know, rebuilt in the style of this version. I don't know. Like, like you can play with the lore, whatever makes sense to you. Um but I thought it would be cool just to have this design for the city and just to show that the Gerudo are more than just this fortress over here, right? Um, I've been connecting the Gerudo fortress um, in Ocarina of Time to the Forsaken, for uh, Forsaken Fortress from Wind Waker. Um, to me, that makes sense given where they are on the map. Um, and so I don't know, like I, I like the idea that the Gerudo are more than just this warrior tribe, a tribe of thieves, right, that would have this thieves fortress. I like thinking that they would have their own civilization as well with culture right and so i've really been trying to expand that in my map and just kind of give respect to this civilization um i don't know like I, I know that there are also some like real world cultural associations uh with the gerudo and i don't want my map to play into some of those stereotypes as well i'm cognizant of that and i want to flesh out these cultures that are based on real cultures especially with the same respect. Obviously, they're not analogs for those real-world cultures, but there are comparisons to be drawn, and I think having, like, a um, a race of thieves is problematic in, its, in itself, right? I want to make sure that it's being fully fleshed out. Um, that's the way that I see it. Sorry if that's too woke for y'all. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, guys. Um, let's explore the north part of the map. We're going to end with um, Central Hyrule. Um, just cause I feel like that's a better closer. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot left like still missing in this part of the map. Um, but there are some key things that I can point out. So we're going to pass by 
Uh, this is Spectacle Island. I need to do some work on its textures, but I've kind of worked on the mountain terrain and putting some stuff together for it. Um, we're going to pass by Tingle Land up here on the right. This is in progress, but you can see kind of in the distance that like Ferris wheel right there. That's what that is. My crosshairs are kind of pointing at it now. Um, so that's going to be a whole theme park um, on what becomes Tingle Island. Really excited to keep fleshing that out, add attractions and rides. And I think that that'll be just really fun to work on. Um, let's keep looking at... So here we're following the train tracks... Um, are those missing textures up there? Do I need to uh, resync those? I can't tell if that's pink. Um, I mean, the part of this project is managing textures. Um, and if like if the file changes its folder location, then that's just part of working on this project. It's just managing a large number of files and keeping track of them as I'm modeling as well, just artistically um, trying to keep a hold on uh, like yeah, like I gotta re redo the UV mapping there. Um, that there's the yeah, like the, those are, or some mixing, missing textures. Looks like I just need to resync maybe like the railing. We'll find out as we get closer. Um, excuse me. So let's let's take a look here. So yeah, I mean most of these textures are there, but I got to redo the UV mapping on some of them, and it's missing the railing textures. But um, aside from that, I like the look of this bridge. <laughs> so I just need to kind of um, do some work on fixing it. So that'll come in time. These are things that. Um, I mean, this is a big project. There's a lot to always work on. But without further ado, I'll let you go.